Good morning, it is Phil to the Brim, and it is Thursday, August 15th, and we are talking about advancement requires clean living. We're looking at the life of David in 2 Samuel chapter 6. Hopefully you are listening to each day so you understand how we are dismantling this scripture so we understand the different parts of what's going on. Too many times we read scripture very shallowly. We allow other people to just kind of make it something that it's not. And this is a deep scripture, how God is addressing David's heart as he's advancing him. David is a new king. Talked yesterday about how Uzzah, in the scripture, Uzzah is the one that dies in this scenario where he touches the Ark of the Covenant because it's on a cart and it's beginning to stumble and fall off. He touches it. He dies. David is mad. This happens at the threshing floor. Talk about the threshing floor, how it's a place of cleansing in scripture many times. Read my book. I have five chapters on that part of scripture. But we find it here. Here at the threshing floor, where the chaff, the threshing floor is where the grain, the chaff and the grain are removed. The chaff is removed. That's the, the stuff that's not useful is removed so that the grain can be valuable and used. And so we finally get into the scripture here where David is now bringing up the Ark of the Covenant from the house of Obed-Edom. I've talked about how they took six steps and every six steps they sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. I talked about that in one of these episodes here because David was making sure we're going to respect the presence of God. Now, let me read to you the scripture in verses uh, 14 and 15 because we're going to focus in on what David's doing. As the six steps are happening and then they do another sacrifice, the priests are making the sacrifice. It says this, Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. He's, his clothes are changed from the beginning of chapter 6. Now he is in humble clothes. He's not in royal robes. He's in humble clothes, dressed like a humble priest. Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, while he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sounds of trumpets. Now this is significant to not just scripture, but royal antiquity. So David wasn't the only king on earth. There were kings all over. Kings of larger kingdoms. But what's very significant here about David as a king dancing is this. That in all of the literature of royalty and antiquity, there is no other king that ever danced before their God and their people. There is no other king recorded dancing before their God and their people. David, King David, is the only one. It didn't happen. Here you have David. This is powerful. This shows the love he has for God. He was dancing exuberantly. He was dancing energetically. And according to, if you unpack it, he was leaping and he was whirling about. David is different. He is different than all the other kings. He says, I choose God's presence as the most valuable thing in my life. David abandons his pride. As he goes and he gets the Ark of the Covenant from Obed-Edom, and before his people, his pride is abandoned, and he is serving as a contrast to King Saul, who only, and King Saul never danced like David, but he would prophesy every once in a while when he would meet up with a, a group of prophets. But King Saul only did that when other people were doing it. He was never the initiator of prophesying. He only fell into the spirit of prophecy because other people were filled. David here is initiating worship. He is initiating abandoned pride. He is showing the people his love for God first and foremost. And he's unaffected by the people around him. He's different. He loves the presence of God more than anything else in his life. 
even as a king, even in the advancement. He says, I choose God's presence. I choose his presence. And he's modeling to the people a new honor and a respect and a regard for the presence of God and the commands of God, the law of God. This time, this time when he's bringing the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, he does it God's way. And there's a new level of worship. There's a new depth of worship that David is bringing the Lord talked about the sacrifices. He says, I'm going to sacrifice of praise every six steps. Now, let me just say something else. told you that in all of antiquity, there was no king, no earthly king that danced before his God and the people. It was unheard of, not recorded, nowhere. But queens were people who danced before God, their God, the gods that they served, and the people. Queens are recorded to do this through the various kingdoms in antiquity. So that's what makes this story very interesting. Because Michael, his wife, who was a queen, who was Saul's daughter, who was from a royal line, should have been with David in the dancing. Actually, according to the cultural dynamics, that was what was expected. But Michael is not dancing. See, she met the presence of God with cynicism and pride. She was like her father Saul. She was more concerned with what other people thought and sustaining her arrogance and pride rather than worshiping God. And she rejected the opportunity to worship God. And as a result, her life was forever poisoned. Her life was forever unfruitful. Let me say this about worship. Pride is not a personality or temperament. Pride in worship, and I'm not just talking about private worship. I'm talking about public worship. Sometimes people say, well, that's not my personality. Ah, uh, hello? Pride is not a temperament or a personality. Pride is not a temperament or personality. It's a sin. It's a sin. And Michael serves as an example of this, that if you're not a worshiper, you will fall into barrenness. Michael was a woman, a queen, that was actually different. We talked about David. David was different. He served as a contrast to all the kings in antiquity. Michael also serves as a contrast. A woman who chose human pride as the most valuable thing, rather than God's presence. When David and her talk, and she's being very condescending and critical of David for his abandoned worship to his God, he tells her, I recognize, Michael, that God has given me everything. Did you know that when we worship the Lord in front of people, I mean really worship Him, don't care what people think, suppressing, not even suppressing, eradicating our pride to worship, we are saying to them, I know God has given me everything in my life. Everything in my life. And He is worthy of all my praise. He is worthy of all my praise. Advancement has to do with whether you really believe and have the expression of He is worthy of all my praise. 
It is a season for advancement. God is checking us. We are at the threshing floor so that he can propel us forward to glorify him. God bless you. Pray about this word.